Hello, everybody. Welcome to Trader Merlin Show. Happy Friday, everybody. Cheers. Hope you're having a nice, cold, frosty beverage. If that's a can of soda, that's fantastic as well. But you should be excited because it's a weekend. It's been a wild, ruckus week. Uh, pretty much everything was up this week except uh, looking out there at gold. Other than that, it was all up. I'm going to flip things around a little bit today. Uh, today's show, I'm going to bring on the guest right away just because he's got to leave at 30 minutes after the hour sharp. So I want to make sure I get as much time with him. Uh, again, hello, Big Eb, Karen, Leticia, Chuck, Tom, Tomasina, Jorge as well. Usually a lighter crowd on Friday. Fridays. That said, let's have a, a good day. Uh, everybody, of course, you know our guest. He's been on the program a few times over the past few weeks. Today will be no different. We're going to have none other than Sam Evans joining us today. Sam, how you doing? Doing great, my friend. How are you? There you are. Look at that. He's got the big microphone now. You're going to the professional equipment, aren't you? Uh -huh. Oh, well, you're getting my video now, are you? Yeah, I got it now, yep. Yeah. Mm. There we go. Very good. Yeah, let me move it out of the way. There you go. It should be fine. So there we are. Yeah, I, I, I've been doing a lot of recording. So I thought, hey, time to kind of like get off the headset, you know, and get a real man's mic. So it's all good. Excellent. You said you're doing a lot of recording. Uh, any any new announcements you want to share with our viewers at all? Yeah, I mean, getting really close to kind of like putting some stuff together, working with a great team on some real fresh content, you know, I think it's going to really be uh, pretty cool in the trading world as well. So I've been putting together, you know, some video material, lessons, I built myself a little studio in the house. So I'm, I've been having a lot of fun with it. So um, like I said, I've not been in a rush in a rush to get stuff out there. My attitude was a lot of people have been asking me, you know, like, when, is it, when are you going to do something? When are you going to come out with something? And um, I just wanted to take my time, make sure it was right you know Merlin mm -hmm. and um, you know, if you're going to do something do it right so I think you know two three weeks or something we should have something to, to kind of announce so I'm kind of let's say we're in the pre-production phase you know what I mean I, I and, do um, I do yeah and, and also you know, here's the thing Merlin I don't want to like if I do like come back into this and I start educating and you know and stuff I don't want to just rehash the stuff I've already done there was a lot of things like I've done in my trading career that you know I was kind of restricted on you know to teach yep. because you know in my time with online trading academy we all st stuck to a one way of doing things and, I, and that was actually one of my ideas so I, I have no problem with that it was good to get that but you know I think a lot of people now are ready to take you know their trading to maybe in a different direction especially in the world of options and so on so I was like you know what I got some cool things I'd like to really share with the world and put that together so um, and rather than just rehash stuff that you know you can find elsewhere I thought I'm going to break some of the stuff out that you know I didn't get the chance to talk about before so I'm excited about it and nice. um, we'll call it your signature series uh, oh yeah or not you know, like, <laughs> but the difference is it will be my signature yes. series and um, you know it's I think it'll be it, look it's going to be cool I, I think the most the fun thing though Merlin you know I have a media background for years I worked in radio and did stuff in TV so now I'm back to recording and editing and putting stuff together and that's really fun it's nice yes. to be creative because let's be honest the trading business is not a creative business <laughs> you know, yeah so. I mean we have to always be on our toes but other than that you know if you ever want you should come out here and check out the studio because I've been spending a lot of time studying equipment and, and, and getting this whole thing broadcasting mm -hmm. so it's uh, it's nice to be able to do that all I think you'd find that enjoyable uh, quick shout out to Leticia and Chris thank you guys so much for the Friday contributions I actually am certainly going to get a beer this evening yes uh, my favorite place I believe is opened up you have to buy food from the food truck to get a beer but I will certainly be having one it's been one of those weeks I would love to go out and be living a normal life again um, Sam earlier we talked on the phone and yeah. you were talking about, uh, I said, what do you want to bring up today? What do you want to discuss? And you talked about earnings a little bit. And I and I, I kind of made that as the, the placard to start the show, the, the, the piece that you know we, we bring up at the very beginning of the show to really give our viewers an idea of what we're going to talk about. And, and there it is, for those that want to see full screen. I put the impact of earnings with Sam Evans. And, and I thought maybe you could give me a, a few little reasons why you thought that was interesting. I know you had some examples you wanted to share and why it's important to you. Yeah, I mean, you come up with things. I always like to try and keep things recent, and and you know me, I've I've never been somebody who like heavily focuses on news and so on. Um, it, but you know, earnings are a big deal, and um, I, I think so many people get tripped up by it, and it's always amazed me just how many times I met in my career people said, oh, you know, or not even just earnings after earnings or a major keynote speech from Apple, like earnings were really good, so I went and bought the stock, and then oh, what happened? Fifteen percent sell off, right? Mm -hmm. And they're like they they scratched their head and they don't get it and you know what is it really all about and and it's funny because 
that people just make the same mistakes over and over again. And when I say it's funny, I mean, I don't want anybody taking any financial loss, but it's like, man, you know, you, you, you gotta sometimes change your tactics. And one for me was, you know, a buddy of mine was, was saying about, you know, Slack and, um, you know, Slack had earnings right last night, right? They came mm-hmm. out. Um, work is the is the ticker symbol, and um, you know I'm I'm a big fan of Slack, by the way. Uh, I've been actually using it, you know, in my endeavors recently. I think it's a really really cool app and so on as well. Um, and you know, there's some interesting stuff, you know, that's been released about, you know, um, by uh, working with Amazon now, and their earnings were up, yet the stock got slammed. I mean, I think shares were down something like 16% overnight mm-hmm. last night, and you know, it's just so funny, you know, you just think to yourself, you know. This is why we preach so much about, you know, the buy low, sell high. And one of my mantras is always when people say, yeah, but if the news is good, shouldn't you buy it? I'm like, yeah, you go buy it. But you've always got to think, who are you buying it from? And and if there was ever a thing I, th- I thought with earnings, and I think it it relates to everything, Merlin, and, and you know this better than anybody. Anytime I hit the buy button, I'm always thinking, man, who's selling this to me right now? Right. Right? <laughs> right? I'm always thinking about that. You know, if I'm selling it, who would be buying it from me right now? Because... You know, you, you look at, you know, let's take you like know, Slack and stuff and it's like hit the psychological levels, you know, or hit you know, a key area like a couple of days ago, for, just over 40 bucks. And, you know, I'm looking at this as well, like we're right back at the top of the established highs from, you know, early a few months uh, from last year and so on. And almost a year in here we are and we're back at previous highs from a year ago. The first thing I look at when I see a chart like that, and if, I'll share my screen actually if you want, just sure. so we can. Yeah, I've got the chart it. up here, but yeah, if you want to draw. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you got the chart right up there. I mean, I'm looking at it on a daily chart on here, so let's just expand it out. And let me just go ahead and uh, bring in some technology on here. So just tell me when you can see that, Merlin. Is that broadcasting for you, buddy? Yep, we got it. There's your screen. Perfect. It's funny, it's funny because I, I'm going to click back and forth. It, it, your screen and mine look almost identical. <laughs> right. I mean, there you go. And and here we are right now. And I track this back 40 bucks. You know what we had previous highs of around. 42 mm-hmm. now these are yearly highs and and i don't care what school of thought you come from that's significant and it amazes me sometimes when people you know when i was teaching you know the the supply and demand thing years ago people were like well you know that's the supply level but how do you know it's going to hold and i'm like well how do you know it isn't right you always have to break sometimes trading and investing down to its rawest lowest common denominator and for me i look at where the market was just like yesterday and the day before mm-hmm. you're at extreme highs of course markets can go higher but i always say to my students does it make sense does it really make logical sense to be buying right here when the market's already had that move when we're at previous highs and you just think to yourself you know when i was going through those earnings come out people rush out and go and buy the stock who do you think is going to be selling to them at that particular point? Because I know somebody who's maybe been you know, in a bit of trouble holding this thing or bought into it in a nice bit of profit. That's a key time to take some decent profit. So there's going to be offers out there at that mm-hmm. price. Yep, absolutely. And, you know, once again, what does the market do? Collapses. And I got to say, after collapsing, man, this is a real sweet buying opportunity where we are right now. Now's the time to buy, right? After the gap down in price. And I just wanted to look at that just as a one that just came out yesterday because like a buddy of mine got a little bit slammed on it. And I was like, dude, if you buy it, you're buying it high. It's like, well, it could go higher. Yeah, but I think it's got a better chance of going higher when it's lower rather than going higher when it's already high, you know? Yeah. Uh, and I just see this play over and over and over again. It also reminded me when we were talking last month about Musk's tweets about mm-hmm. uh, Tesla thing took a 21% sell off look where it is now higher than it was when he made those statements you know it's it's just crazy and i don't know what your tactics have been over the years with with playing earnings but oh. but, but for me i'm always like i'm just going to play it the way i play it anyway regardless of the earnings you know what's your thoughts on that pal uh, i am a, i'm a big fan of staying away from them 100% you know for me <laughs> I, i'm trying to come up with an analogy that is as a decent reference point but Trading and earnings announcement is exciting because we look at them and you can, you can, uh, if you want to shop there on your screen there, Sam, I've got it over here. Um, mm-hmm. If you, we all want to be in the earnings announcement. And I think the crazy part about it is there's an excitement, there's a euphoria. When you see tomorrow morning or Monday morning, somebody will have reported earnings and that's all they're going to talk about. You'll see Joe Carter yeah. out there going, wow, did you see Slack technology today? My goodness, if you weren't on board, you missed a 30% move or Amazon. Right. And, and they, it's, it's almost like our media, right? They don't want to yeah. talk about the 10 cops that really did a great job and were helping and being calm and peaceful and with protesters. They want the guy who's beating up on the homeless dude because it's sensationalism it gets ratings and votes and excitement yes it is the longer you, you make- watch this shit the more you realize that these earnings are are a scam i mean 
look here. Let, let me show you guys what we're talking about when I say it's a scam. Um, it, it's it's there's a reason by the rumor sell the news is a, is a fact of the marketplaces. Let me bring up the earnings calendar here so you guys can see this one. Here's the earnings calendar for Slack Technologies. They reported aftermarket close on uh, yesterday. So yep. you can see that right there. It's this one right here, work. Now they blew out earnings. They had a huge earnings day. They were supposed to lose seven cents per share. They came out at negative two. So they're still losing money, but it's way better than expected, right? It's almost like the unemployment numbers day. It was a big surprise. And you would think that yeah. that would have blown out and just ripped this thing higher. Look what happened. This red candle here is Thursday's trading action. So basically yesterday, it was selling off all day long as information, the insiders knew what the hell was going on. And then all of a sudden the retail public thinks that they're gonna blow out earnings because of that huge run up it has and they get smoked. My attitude is earnings are like going out on a date and you, you the date shows up and she's got a, a knife in one hand. She says that she loves you the first second she sees you and she knows you're gonna be her husband. Walk away. Run away from it because you know it's nothing but trouble. Dude, you, know? you sound like you're talking from experience there. <laughs> well, it's just it's it's difficult because it's it, it pulls you in, you know, it's you want to catch that fifty percent pop. Everybody wants it. But in order to get that, you have to suffer through something like this with work where you know it dropped twenty percent and that'll blow your account if you're leveraged wrong. I, I it's it's terrible well, it happens all the time. Is and the irony is you want to get that pop but the best chance of getting the pop is after the bubbles burst and then you buy it for the next move right it's you know but it's the it's the patience thing isn't it i mean just to expand upon that you know with all this i mean and you know we threw earnings in this because you know it's relevant but it, it really it's with all news right it, it's with every single bit i've had done presentations over the years i've had people blue in the face going i can't believe you don't listen to the news and i'm like well let's list some of it right yeah. you've got economic statements you've got earnings you know you've got gdp you've got interest rates you've got commodity prices you've got world events like covid right and they're like yeah i said one how can you keep track of it all two you're gonna get an opinion but the problem is does the market share your opinion and then you know, they start looking at me merlin and they're like all right we'll expand i'm like well look, let's go around the room here i'm like how many of you think you know that sometimes you know the newspapers lie and tell the, you know, and bend the truth. And every hand goes up in the room. And I, how many of you guys, you know, think that maybe occasionally politicians lie to us, right? <laughs> right? Every hand goes in the room. Right, how many times do you think, you know, companies maybe lie to us? And they're like, yeah, I said, so if companies lie, the media can lie. And I'm not saying they do it all the time, but if there's the possibility that companies, politicians, presidents, the media, newspapers, and journalists all could lie, how can you take any of this stuff as gospel? Right. Yep. The only truth is price. And that was the thing to me years ago, one of my first mentors. He went, Sam, you want to stand on the right side of this? Tr price is the only truth. Trust that more than anything else. And and I've lived by that ever since. Yeah, it's, it's a good one to live by. I, I agree. It's just hard because, you know, especially in the position that I'm in and doing this show, very often I get people who are asking me specifically about penny stocks or specifically about earnings. And you and I both... We're always looking at those going, those are the two gambles, penny stocks and earnings. You know, if you want consistency, could you have it with penny stocks? In a long shot, maybe. But the odds are you're just going to be hitting home runs every now and again and lots of strikeouts. You know, we want to uh, to have something that gives us a, a possibility of consistency, and that's not going to happen trading earnings announcements. No, it never is. I mean, it's like going down the racetrack. You know, my it's interesting. I'll tell you a story now. My father, my late father, he um, he was a betting man. He was as close to a professional gambler as I ever met. Um, he was a, greyhounds was his thing. He actually owned, you know, trained greyhounds, raced them, and so on. And I used to watch my dad. And he used to take me to the track, and I'd sometimes go with him. And I know he'd sometimes go two, three weeks without taking a bet. Okay, he still go to the track, still watch the dogs, and he knew when his dogs were going to be racing, and he'd know the weather conditions, the dogs they were racing against, the owners, the trainers, the diets, and he'd wait, you know, and he'd take that bet when all the odds are in his favor, and like that for me was the closest thing to being a pure professional gambler. But I look back on it now, and I'm like, he was more of a speculator, right? Mm -hmm. Because you know, you look at the market, and you're like, well, when the odds are in your favor, you know, when the rewards there, the risks there, and everything lines up, that's when you bam, you take your shot. What does the amateur gambler do? They go down the track and go, oh, Lucky Lucy, I like the name of that. I used to date a girl called Lucy, and it's a 50 to 1 odds on. You know, let's 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 do it. And they'll put like, you know, 10 bucks on it, and guess what? It comes in someday, because every other dog on the track was limp, and they've made money. They're not going to do that every week. Right. You know? Yeah. <laughs> That's not a career. 
Now, that's not a repeatable thing, and they're going to have far more losses than they are wins, and it just keeps them in the game long enough, and it's amazing the similarities you see. Playing earnings is just like that. It's spin the, you know, it's, it's just literally roll the dice, spin the wheel, and good luck, you yeah. know? And, and that's what it comes down to. And that I've never met a market professional who, who adopts it in that way. I mean, even with earnings, you know, you buy, you call, you buy, you put, you do your straddles, your strangles. Eh, you know what I mean? It, it's all very much to right. me just throwing it out there and hoping something good happens and, and unfortunately that's in, in anything you look at whatever you can say a professional gambler in Vegas horse racing uh, you know anybody even boxing sporting events you know there's the people who just go oh well yeah, the Niners are going to win by 7 this weekend why well because I'm a fan no there's people you, the, the, the artists go behind the yeah. scenes they're like oh the running back was sick uh, yesterday you know he hurt his t-. all these things factor into our assessments of making a trade and bottom line is guys uh, on this earnings thing your goal is to reduce risk as much as possible. And if you want to reduce yeah. risk, just leave earnings alone. If anything, trade after the announcement comes out when it's the buy the rumor, sell the news effect. Uh, quick shout out to Darren, Chef E, Big Ab. You guys are just awesome. And to Thomasina, thank you for the double dip there. Thomasina says chipping away. Uh, they, there's this new feature, Sam, which uh, it's, mm-hmm. it actually embarrasses me, but I appreciate it. It's nice. You can do these things called uh, super super chats or super stickers on YouTube. Right, okay. And basically when someone does it, it, it they can send money in. So I, I removed all the ads from the show now, and people are now just donating money, which is really cool. I appreciate it. You're going you're gonna to help me buy another <laughs> bottle of Michter's because I might finish this one tonight given the way the week's going. But uh, it's really nice. Thank you guys so much for the support. I really do appreciate it. Um, uh, you do a great job, man. I'm like, it, it, it's, it's cool to see, mate. It's, it's very, very cool to see. You know, you talked about broadcasting and doing what you love, and I'm, yeah. I'm glad to see you kind of going down that path again too because I was never in broadcasting, but as soon as Gary Christmas asked me to do power trading radio uh, 10 years ago, mm. I kind of fell in love with the art of being here on a camera. I'm staring into a small little dot right now pretending I'm, I'm looking at a room full of people, hundreds of people. Yeah. And there's an energy, there's a, a, a challenge to my brain that says I have to think about all the switches I need to hit to make the show work well. I need to think about the charts. I need to think about analysis. I need to think about my talk track, the questions coming in. To me, it keeps my brain going, and I absolutely love it, and I hope that I can scale this up and make it even bigger. So it's awesome. It really is good fun. It is good fun. And and again, like I say, for such a dry industry, it, it's great now that technology allows us to kind of like put some fun into this. And yep. uh, for me, I've always found the fun was never trading. It was teaching it, talking about the market, you know, showing people different ideas as well. It's just incredible that we live in a world now where we can literally do this from the comfort of our own homes if we need to as well. I mean, I was talking to you about it. My green screen technology is on the way. It's not hard to do, you know. Wow. I've, been producing, I've been producing trailers and all this kind of stuff. I built my own studio lighting and everything it's, it's been really fun really really fun to do so uh, I, love I feel it. like I'm getting back to my roots after all these years good you know, uh, well, you know what I, I hope I can uh, get you a part of, of this show more regularly because I think you and I we, we have fun together uh, let's go back Absolutely. to uh, and again thanks for everybody out there yes I do agree I would much rather not do ads but you know, obviously, uh, at a certain point, uh, I'm not charging you know six thousand dollars a year for subscriptions to the show like some people are. I it's free, so I'm doing it because I love it. So I I, I, I appreciate the, the contributions. Um, let's go to listener questions because I want to make sure we get some. I know you've got to sure, get out of here in twelve it. minutes. Um, Heath says, "Can you give me your analysis? I'll bring the screen up. I bring your analysis of the Aussie. So let's take a look at AUD USD here for for Heath." Uh, give some insight into that one because it is rather interesting point right now, I think, um, and just want to get your two cents on it. I've got the chart up here on the daily. I don't know where you want to start. Yeah, we were talking about this last week on the show, weren't we? Um, I know one of our listeners had, um, you know, was took that short on the trade, um, and we were looking to, for taking just a very conservative three to one on that. I believe it was something like a four hour or an eight hour chart on that. But both of us were bullish on that one. Um, mm-hmm. You know, again, I, I remember we were talking about the monthly level and some of the fundamentals behind it. I mean, that thing has just carried on. That was why I was concerned about the short side of things last week i mean you know what i'm i'm here but you know what i'm seeing is i hear a lot of talk about white open space on the right hand side now so let's take a look at this daily chart what have we had here merlin we've had one two three four five actually six upward days real elevated price you know but that's where a lot of people get in trouble because I love shorting things that are overextended and heck, mm-hmm. this market is overextended, but if there's nothing to stop it, it's just gonna carry on. It's called momentum, right? 
And you know, I see people blindly just trading shorts or longs off any level just because a market's overextended. Well, again, to me, going over to those monthly charts, you know, and what we're seeing on those monthly charts, you know, this is as still for me got the room to go, you know, to the upside. I mean, now we are in the for me the ideal place for a short. Let's look at I the month for just yep. a second. I, I, now have, to, I the, have to tell you, I agree 100%. I think if you are going to go for a short right now. You are in the ideal point. place for it. Now, so it's not going to get much better than this, you know. It really isn't going to get much better. This was the last big push down. This, I've got 0.6759 to 0.7032 on the spot price right now. Um, we're right in the area. I mean, look, this is one of those things. I'd like to see how it opens up on Sunday afternoon. For me, and again, you know, I'm just looking. I would feel more comfortable getting my stops above, you know, those highs of, you know, uh, I think about Q2 2019. I'd like my stops above, just above 71 to give this a little bit of room. You know, so I wouldn't mind putting like, you know, maybe like, a, you know, a hundred tick stop on this or something because I see a whole lot of downside on it. But I mean, people can refine their entries. And I know you're really good at that as well. But for me, this whole area, now's the time. This is the test. I mean, this has got everything lined up. This has got the old support levels from 15 and 16 that could now become the new, you know, resistance areas. You know, it's a good, strong level of supply right now. It's a nice pullback in the upward trend as well that we've had. I'm still more bullish on this, Aussie. I'm, I'm, I'm going to say that. I am mm -hmm. still more bullish mm -hmm. on I agree. This. But, but but that's long term and that's just my opinion now is the time to get short on this thing I think and and this for me you know if these areas hold with this rally I'm gonna be real conservative I'm gonna go and look at some targets off of the weekly charts right now so you know if you look at the weekly charts on here where we are I would say to me you know on this if this thing holds being conservative I wouldn't be surprised to see it go down to about 0.6726 you probably got about you know 200 plus pips on that and an absolute push taking it down to about 6550 for a mm -hmm. second target but if we get back to that 65 there 0.65 area that for me is another buying opportunity but you've got some good space there of almost 500 pips on the downside I think I I like it I think it looks great guys I'm, I'm looking at this one and, and this is the beauty of I, I hope you got that from what Sam says, and this is why I like Sam's analysis here, is you could look at both of us straight in the face and say, is it going up or down? And we could all make the same argument. It's going to go up and it's going to go down, right? Yeah, it's it's right. We could say, hello, Dr. Obvious. But the question is, where exactly are those points? And uh, that's why I like that you said, let's look at the monthly. You guys look at the monthly chart here. It's saying to go short. It's saying this thing is trending down. This is a small pullback. During that downtrend, you're looking to go short, and you're right at an epic supply level, at least on the monthly, right? So if you're yeah. thinking of shorting, this is looking really good. Now, if we go yeah. back to the weekly here, same thing. The only problem I have here with this weekly is you look at this tail. I'll, I'll, do, the, I'll do the Sam Evans analysis and, and throw some circles on here. Oh, it's on snap mode. Circles don't work in snap mode, Merlin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you look at this little point right here that I've got highlighted with this purple circle. You're like, okay, well, it's coming back up into supply. The, the unfortunate part is that's an area that's been hit before. So that's the only chink in the armor, I would say, on yeah. this one. I agree with Sam. This is extremely o extended, overrun right now. If I go to the daily, I'm looking at this going, there's something that's happening on these last three days worth of trading, which are long topping tails. That's a sign of indecision. So really what you're doing is waiting. I, I wouldn't just short here because you're in supply, whereas most people would say you that's where you should do it. I would wait for confirmation. So if you got down below, let's say 69, uh, maybe even a little bit higher than that, 69.30, then I'd say you're probably in a good spot for a short here, Heath. I like it. I might put myself in the same trade here, but um, I'm going to wait a little bit for confirmation on this one. Nice little tactic I've got that you actually said on that myself as well. You know, I'll always have a stab, but I've seen so many times at these key areas, I'll have a go, I'll get into this thing, and it might spike me out and then drift down afterwards. What I'd like to see on the one hour chart is it start it's putting maybe like a, a lower low. I've not mm -hmm. yet seen that. If you go to the one hour chart, you'll see the trend is still very nice. Yeah. Um, it's still going. I will say the impulse moves are shortening, which is a, sm a smoke signal that 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 trend's running out of steam. Um, I've not seen a good piece of quality new like supply or selling activity for me so if we could maybe start to put in a nice low on here like i'd love to see a little push you know you've got that recent area around 69 30 let's take that out let the market show us yes that now that some sellers have come in and then we short a nice rally back to the origin of a good supply area that for me would be a nice low risk opportunity and you're not going to have a huge stop on that I agree. I think, uh, Keith, I think Sam and I both agree that's probably a good one. We like it. Uh, I would say shorting is the time now, but I think the key is 
you want to make sure that you allow the market to do what it has to do. Let it prove itself first because if you go short right now, you are literally standing in front of an avalanche with your hand extended saying, you shall not pass. And it's, right. been, it's been ripping. And let's be honest, if we look at the dollar index, which was a question we had earlier, um, you know that is a major factor for this move right now. You're seeing the dollar just getting slaughtered. So anything against the dollar, <clears throat> except the Japanese yen, is going to be doing rather well. Uh, mm. Second question here, Sarah T says, I've been following the Canadian dollar since you talked about it a couple weeks ago. Now that the gap is closed on the daily, is it time to go long? So I will... Uh, bring that long trade up here, or at least ana the analysis of it. Let's go dot D. Uh, there is your 60 minute, let's go uh, USD CAD. Oops, I'm on the, I'm on the wrong chart. Uh, USD CAD, and we'll make that a daily. So what do you think here, Sam? We've seen a pretty impressive sell-off in that dollar. I mean, uh, the USD CAD's gone from 130, we'll call it 140 to 134. That's a huge yeah. drop in a period of eight trading sessions. Uh, you, and we have closed the gap. I'll bring this little line down here right to that gap point. I mean, we closed it, and it looks like it bounced up a little bit. What's your What's your take? Oh, you know, <laughs> it's, it's uh, this one, okay, right. So this one here, for me, I, I'm, I'm back on that monthly chart. I'm down there. I love a gap as much as the next person. I, I really do. But I'm, I'm going to go look at this thing. And I'm, I'm on that monthly chart and I want to, I've blown that thing right up. And I got to say, if I look at this monthly chart and you're going to notice, I'm a big picture guy. You know, if you guys, if, if you listeners and viewers haven't realized this by now, I'm all about the big picture. Even when I day trade, I'm all about big picture. I will be honest with you. Like while there's a nice little setup here, I feel right now we're in the middle of a range that we've been seeing since 2015. Mm -hmm. That's what I look at when I really look mm -hmm. at this chart. This market does not have clear direction. You know, some people look at that chart, oh, it's in an uptrend. I'm like, mm, is it really? Because right. if you blow that thing out and you look at this thing over actually the last 19 years, there's not been a clear trend of any kind of uh, way. And yet we've been trending up for a couple of years, then we were trending down. For me, those big rejection topping tails that I'm seeing, I'm looking at the spot market here right now. I gotta say, you know, at the end of the day, I would expect a little bit of a pop off of this right now. But to me, you're in the middle of a range. I would at this point here, like like to see it push a little bit higher one of two things i like to see it push a little bit higher i tell you what i do like is on the daily chart short around the 138 area there's a beautiful area right there then re-engage it to the downside mm -hmm. or let this thing stretch its legs a little bit further and buy a little bit lower that's what that, that's what i like and and it's just to me it's just it, it's too it's an ugly looking market this i think it's got no real clear direction so i would say yeah right now getting short higher which is around the 138 area on the daily charts let's look at it on sunday i would just say for you if you look on the if you look on the actual monthly charts you'll see that there is actually a, a, a base that's formed on there between around 129.59 and 132.24 where the true origin of that move was that would put me a little bit deeper and a little bit lower you know what concerns me merlin though is i look at the daily charts and I don't see a whole lot of real clear, clear, untested areas. You know, mm -hmm. I know we've got the gap right now. I just wish this gap would not have hit this late in the day going into a weekend, you know. But if you do look a little bit lower, I might just kind of share this with you. Let me actually go share my screen with you again. Yeah, go for quick. it. Yep. Go this is the one this is the area that I'm actually looking at right now on the top right on the daily charts. What I like is this little area. There's this kind of a rally. Did you, get it shared? A you haven't shared your screen. Oh, have I not? There we go. There we go. How's that coming for you? You got that? Perfect. Yep, there you go. All right. So if you look on the top right on the daily charts, you'll see here there's this area I've marked off around 132.97, 32.64. I always like the round numbers on these things. Me too. And, you know, we can see we've kind of gone quite deep into this gap area here. Nice little imbalance in this area, right around the round numbers of 130, right at the base of this monthly chart area as well. That, for me, would be a nice long. That's where I'd like to get it. A little bit lower, let this thing get a little bit more stretched, considering that, to me, me it is a little bit rangy at the moment other than that you know and i've been only playing extremes any analysis i've been doing on dollar cad lately it's been extremes 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 that there would be my short that there would be my long and i'll ignore everything else in between because this market is directionless i like it and you know what it, this is where i think it, it it speaks to the differences of of traders this is why things work guys is if you look at that chart right there that sam or that that i've got up sam i, I pulled yours off so okay um 
the argument or the comment came in here, and this is great for Luis. It says USD CAD is by no means on a higher time frame chart. It's calling along. Uh, unless you're an intraday trader and maybe looking at a 30 minute or two hour charts and then look um, so you're right and I agree with that if you look at this time frame here um, I would actually make the argument that if you are looking at the bigger picture on this monthly it is making higher lows and I, I my bias is slightly to the buy side here simply because the trend that goes back to 2011 I'm mm -hmm. not a big fan as Sam pointed out that consolidation that chop that's been happening since 2015 it's not that great but if we break this down into the daily um, I would argue that the daily is actually telling you to go short however we're at extremely oversold conditions I could bring up stochastics Bollinger Bands MACD they're all going to yeah. tell you this thing is oversold and it's right at the origin of a huge gap move so as a shorter term guy, I'm actually looking to say, I'm okay to go long here. I, I, I like this as a potential long point, but I have to be careful because I am going counter trend on a very strong sell-off move. So um, I'm, I'm okay with it. I think that either way, we have to make our play based off of our rules. And, and right now, I'm liking uh, USD CAD as a potential buy bounce here. Yeah, absolutely. And, and and that's the thing. I mean, it's, it's, it's certainly not a selling opportunity right now after this move at all. You know, and look, let's face it, you know, you look at that daily area where the gap is, it's going to be a low risk. You know me, I'm just, I've just played the extremes and I've always just found yep. I go as extreme as I can because if I do go to the extremes, Merlin, I find that even whether I'm, I'm going with a trend or I'm counter trend, you go further enough to the extremes, you typically can get something. Do you know yep. what I mean? I agree. Um, I always say this, you know, it's like, they say, don't catch a falling knife. Well, what, what, Wear a pair of like Kevlar gloves and then try. It's a lot safer, you know? <laughs> That's what you do. You go right. to the extremes. <laughs> I, I'm looking. I got like 30 seconds. I got to let you go here. I know you got to leave. All uh, right, buddy. What's your thoughts on CFDs? You got a, a, a thought on CFDs, certificate for deposits? I know you're UK uh, guys. So. No, I don't give them any thought, if I'm honest <laughs> with you. Uh, I, I really don't. You know, if, if I can you know leverage my money and you know keep it risk low and safe you know fine listen as part of a portfolio great you know um, i always look at it like this you always want to have of any portfolio that you've got you always want to have a, I, I think you know the steady portion you know and the aggressive portion but again you know with interest rates being what they are i'm like you know i i think there's better opportunities out there you know i i like i like bond ladders there's some pretty cool things you know with yeah, bond ladders yeah. i'm happy to talk about that i love the concept of the bond ladder you know structuring i call it your own dynamic annuity without the fees that for me is better you know and the problem is, is you know i there's always a better way of doing things I feel um, and, and and I'm not against the concept of something that's safer absolutely not I mean there's risks involved with everything but I just you know feel there's probably a, a more I'd say smarter way of doing it you know maybe we should talk about bond ladders a little bit in our next one because that for me would what I would take as a preference yeah I'm down let's let's do that uh, guys I have his uh, Twitter handle up here on the screen it's at Sam Evans trader s-a-m-e-v-a-n-s -E trader t-r-a-d-e-r that's his uh, Twitter handle there. So if you want to get in touch with Sam, I want to uh, communicate, see some of his posts. I'm sure he'll be uh, doing much more actively Absolutely. as his product rolls out. Absolutely. And two things on that before I go, you know, I, I want to just say if any of the uh, your listeners, you know, I know who follow me on Twitter, the, uh, and a load of the guys rally. I had some imposter, you know, literally clone my account, my yeah. Twitter account. I mean, listen, I'm honored, but you know, idiot is what I'm also going to say to whoever did it. I reckon it was a robot, you know, literally just calling me Sam Evans trade and changing a few things. But you know what really got me, Merlin? It was like, they were retweeting pictures of my son and that, that just bugged the, the yeah. life out of me. Yep. And I was just like, you have to be so careful in today's day and age, you know, with people kind of like trying to steal your identity. So yeah, no, just make sure, you know, I, I want to just say thank you firstly to the people who helped report that and made me aware of it. I know a lot of you are listening right now. I really, really appreciate that. And secondly, you know, for anyone out there, just be careful. There's a lot of crazy idiots out there who seem mm -hmm. to kind of you know feel that they've got a right to do stuff like that so um yeah absolutely just be careful and on that subject you know if anyone does want to reach out to me and, and with um messages through uh sam evans trader at twitter that's the best way to get me um if you are interested in you know joining in my getting on my mailing list and so on i'll be sending out information very soon about my ventures and everything that's going on i will be announcing it here as well all at the same time but you drop me a line on there and i'll make sure you guys are staying on the loop as well Awesome, Sam. Thank you so much. I hope Pleasure, you have man. fun doing whatever you're going to do. I know it's the weekend. Happy Friday. Uh, I cheers just to bought you, my myself, friend. Dude, I just, bought, I just bought myself a brand new Weber grill. So I got my Genesis 2 and it got my searing station. And I'm going to go and grill, man. I got like, I, I promised the family, you know, some food and everything. So I'm going to be going and grilling. Cooking oh. is one of my pastimes. So I'm, I'm going to get out there and get America. cooking on this Friday night, my friend. I was going to raise my glass and just say America, right? Just go, let's go <laughs> grill some <laughs> animals or some veggies and have a good one.
It was awesome finally, Sam. I became American. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, Sam. Well, thank you so much. I, I really appreciate it, man. Oh, uh, no, likewise. Let's, uh, let's, let's hook up next week on here, all right? Thanks, everybody, for, for taking the time Take to care. listen. Appreciate right. it. Bye-bye. Oh, yeah, that was fun. Uh, Sam Evans, great. And yeah, Chuck, you caught me there. I, it's funny, my brain, I was just talking about one of my joys of broadcasting and doing this, <laughs> is that my brain has to do so many things, and I feel like sometimes I'm exhausted after I do these shows or teaching live. Uh, it was funny because I was trying to run through so many things. Yeah, CFDs isn't certificate for deposit. I don't know. I think I did say certificate. For, it's not. It's contract for difference. Thank you for that, for that, Chuck. I I know what it is. I just for some reason my brain just said certificate for deposit, but it is contract for difference. What's interesting? I learned this about the UK. In the UK, they have uh, a VAT, a value added tax, and it's substantial for those that trade equity markets. So you don't get a lot of people trading on the London Stock Exchange. It's just not big business because there's so much taxes for the average person on that. However, CFDs are not considered that and they're not, they don't have the value added tax. They're essentially gambling is what the, the government views that. So there's no tax on them, which is why you get such a propensity for people doing that. Now, these rules might have changed when I was living in Italy. That's how it was set up. So they were huge because they didn't have the tax implications, um, et cetera. So I look at them as a gambling tool, to be honest, and I just don't. I, I've seen what goes on behind the scenes because you're not actually trading the market. You're trading that company's quotes on the CFD, and they can be different from firm to firm. So I've always been real sketchy on CFDs. Anyway, uh, guys, I hope you enjoyed Sam Evans. You can check him out at Sam Evans Trader. That's his Twitter handle. He'll be getting you more information uh, about his upcoming endeavors. Whatever those may be, happy to support Sam. He's always been a great guy, great teacher as well, um, and uh, just always trying to to help people get past those obstacles that they first encounter. I know that's one of my goals too, is to make sure that, uh, you know, people learn from my stupid, idiotic, moronic mistakes that I've made in the past. All right, let me go to uh, your calendars. Now, I just want to go to the calendars quick, I, I just because I can and may as well end these, uh, we can end anytime we want. Uh, here is your economic calendar for Monday. There really is nothing earnings wise. There's nothing exciting with the earnings front for for today or Monday. So I just removed that. Today's big thing was the unemployment number. So let me real quick um, pull up a different screen here just so you guys can see it. The, 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 the reason these markets went absolutely apeshit today was because of this right here. It's, it's this unemployment numbers. Not only the non-farm unemployment change, and, and you remember I was talking yesterday about how the ADP non-farm employment change came out on Thursday, and those numbers were very similar to this, although uh, it was, if you read from left, or sorry, uh, right to left, you can see here, I will use the pen to help illustrate this so you guys can see a little bit better. Um, the previous month reading was negative 20 million, meaning there were 20 million jobs lost. The expectation is we we're gonna come out at 7.7 .7 million jobs lost. Now, this is interesting to me because the ADP non-farm employment change was almost the same. There was two million higher. So it was like 22 million jobs lost and the expectation was nine. And they came out at, I believe, negative two million. So all of a sudden we got this number today of positive, not a negative number, but basically saying there's job creation. That number is what ripped us to the upside. It's basically it's anybody who's feeling pessimistic on the markets, including myself, have to look at that number and go, oh shit. We came back from this very, very easily. Like we're bouncing back very quick. It looks smooth. I don't know if that's gonna continue, we will see. The other part here, and we did talk about this yesterday where I said, hey, I'm not, um, I'm not really expecting the unemployment numbers to be as apocalyptic, All right? We talked about the expectation for US, un oops, ah, US unemployment number. What is going on here? U.S. unemployment numbers to be 19%. Uh, That's what the expectations were. You can see that right here in the middle, right? Which means that it's getting worse. And I made the comment that, you know, the way things have transitioned so quickly, I don't really see uh, us beating 19%. I think we're going to be a much less of that. And actually, not only were we less, I thought we'd actually be in like the 14 to, to 16 range. We came in at 13.3 on the unemployment rate, which is really a positive sign for our markets going forward. And that uh, is why we saw this market do an absolute rip, rip to the upside today. 
Uh, last piece, this is for what's happening on Monday, just so I can get this one for you. There really isn't much from a US perspective. Uh, you can see up here at the top, we've got housing starts for Canada. Um, other than that, is there anything really important? I mean, look, the unemployment rate for the Swiss franc, while it's uh, it's not that important, who really cares about the Swiss franc, sorry. <laughs> sorry all my Swiss friends out there. Um, Doris, thank you so much for the contribution, I appreciate that. I'm trying to figure out what that little picture is there. Oh, we're, and the marching band. Um, you know, here, I meant to mention this the other day. I do a thing every now and again, and I encourage you all to do it. We are now, what's it, it's the 5th, so we're five days late, or you guys are five days late to this. But here's what I encourage you to do. Every month that starts, pick something that you want to do and improve on. I have a list, and it's been the same. I keep going through the same list over and over and over again for month after month, year after year, about different things I want to accomplish, like your five-year plan, your visions, and things to make our lives better or just myself better. So one of the things I did in January is I did this 100 push-up challenge where basically every day you have to do 100 push-ups. Doesn't matter how you do them, you just have to do 100 push-ups per day. And some people in the audience right now go, I can't do five push-ups. Well then do four push-ups and do that 50 times over the course of a day. What I noted, and I actually took before and after pictures, my physique changed dramatically and I was actually really happy with it. So um, for the month of June, I'm doing that again, I'm doing a 100 push-up challenge. And I'm also challenging myself this, I'm doing two challenges, to either study a language or play an instrument for an hour a day. So I've been playing the bass and I'm studying German, so uh, trying to get those two things done. I encourage all of you to do something like that. I know it's stupid, you're like, this is a finance trading show, blah, 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 but it's really a betterment show, isn't it? I mean, isn't the whole point of this to do things to help or make our lives better? So, you know, if you want to be in better shape, then go walk for an hour a day. If you want to uh, lose belly fat, then go run for, you know, 30 minutes or run a mile a day, but set some benchmark and do it every single day for the remainder of the month of June and let me know how that's going for you. But you got to stick to it. Like, it's hard to do 100 push-ups a day, especially when you come home and you're really tired <laughs> can I do one push up for 100 days, GD? You could do that. I'm telling you though, the results will astound you and it will motivate you to become even better and do more and do more and do more. So uh, anyway, I wanted to throw that out there. I know it's a total tangent, but I think in, in the pursuit of trading and investing, it's about betterment. Most of it's looked at as financial betterment. I think it's betterment from here. It's, it's who makes you the person that you are and, and the things that you want to achieve in life. Otherwise, we can do the same thing every single day and not get any you know, betterment out of it. Um, I'll keep you posted, Karen, but I'm certainly not going to post pictures of me, uh, you know. <laughs> uh, I'm going to keep my clothes on for you guys. Uh, Chris, you're supposed to do that in a Yoda voice, Chris? Mm, stupid naughty it is, yes? Mm. Um, and Tom, that's actually funny because I tell you what, I did uh, the 100 burpee challenge for the month of January, and I did it. And I felt, I was, I loved it. I really did enjoy it. It was tough to do, but I loved it. And then for the month of February, I tried to do a 100 burpee challenge. And I will tell you that 100 burpees is beyond brutal. I only did it for eight days and I just couldn't do it anymore. It was really, really tough. Uh, let's see, if, see me, Darren, I'm not gonna form a German metal band. I'm not a big yeller or screamer. I don't, uh, aggression, the aggression will not stand, man. Okay, um, no, Natalia, no pictures. Uh, maybe on a different channel. Uh, let's see, what was the other question that came through? Um, Rel, what's going to happen if you go back to OTA? Chris, I'm back at OTA. Uh, I'm back, I've been back for, um, ooh, I've been back for about three weeks now building content. And it's funny because somebody was blowing me up today on Twitter um, saying, oh, you're attacking Sam. And, and it was, I was just laughing about it. I'm like, I, you know, I'm not attacking Sam. I, I'm, I'm making comments about someone who I don't think should have the notoriety and, and uh, fan base that he does if people knew what went on, what went on behind the scenes. Uh, and then the guy goes on to attack Ayal Shahar and just goes on and on and on. And I'm like, God, yeah, I will stand by Ayal Shahar as a human being, as a character. Um, I believe that the mission statement of Online Training Academy is intact. And all of us that are there or continue to stay there fully believe it. I know many of you are Online Training Academy graduates. Uh, some might be frustrated that you're not successful traders. That's just par for the course. You have to work and you hopefully will get to that point. Um, but as far as an entity trying to help people succeed in financial markets, give them the proper information, teach them rules, discipline, money management, um, I don't think there's anybody better than OTA out there. So hey, uh, give me all the crap you want on my Twitter feed if you want. I'll just laugh it off. All right. Yes, Brendan says body weight and free weights is all you need. Yeah, absolutely. Um, look at uh, Tabata is another one, T-A-B-A-T-A. -A -A. These are where you do 30-second exercises, uh, exercises for 30 seconds and take a 10-second break, and then you go back 
uh, and do another one. You do like six in a row and then you take a two minute break and do it all over again. Uh, whatever it is, you gotta be active. You know, one of the things that um, I, I found about the coronavirus is one doctor I followed in particular said, you know what, a lot of it um, is based off your health. And if you're unhealthy or out of shape, you're a vulnerable target for coronavirus. Now, who knows if that's true or not, but how many times in your life, honestly, by show events, how many of you have heard that if you're healthy and you exercise and you're in shape, that you're more vulnerable to illness, that you're more vulnerable to being sick? Never. It's always be in shape, take care of yourself, be healthy. Yeah, I'm having a glass of whiskey here on the show, but you know what? It's okay. Every now and again, I will uh, have a glass of whiskey, but I'm not an I'm not an alcoholic by any means. I just know I got a glass. I still want to take care of myself and be in shape. And again, we should all be doing the same thing. Anyway. All right. Um, Darren says, I gained 10 COVID pounds. I think a lot of people might be gaining those COVID pounds. Well, then Darren, your mission is for the next 30 days, go out and just run one mile. I challenge you just to grab it, uh, grab it. You can go, Nike has a great app. You can set it up, just run for one mile and do it every single day. Those 10 pounds will be gone by the end of June, I promise you. Uh, GD says, isn't that HIT, which is high intensity interval training? Same thing. They're, they're really similar Tabata and HIT. Um, and my friend Katie and I, we actually do those um, uh, HIT workouts or Tabata exercises probably one or two days a week. And it's, uh, they're, they're brutal, but they're, they're a lot of fun. Okay, sorry, I went off on tangents. Any uh, trading questions here that uh, you guys want me to get through? I, what time is it? 46? I, I, I'm almost to the end of the show today, to be honest. But um, hot yoga. a boy, Brendan. Is, I was going to say, is that stress? You lost 25 pounds? <laughs> Fitness got me zero six days last 10 years. Good. Um, that's awesome. And, and again, you know, I don't want to badmouth anybody. Just you, you got to take care of ourselves. Um, you look at the, the health and fitness and care that we can take of our body is the, the single greatest power that we have is take care of ourselves. So I'm sure I don't eat right. I'm sure my diet isn't the best in the world, but I'm exercising. I'm trying to stay in shape um, both physically and mentally, which is maybe sometimes even the harder challenge. Uh, DRX is good, but I actually really do like free weights. Um, I just I like free weights, but body exercises are great. Chris says the indicator of Friday. What indicator do you want, Chris? Type in an indicator and I'll do my best to go over it right now. Hopefully I know the one. Um, diet is the other part. Learn to cook. 100%. 100%. Oh, you know what? I owe a tiramisu recipe next week. Uh, okay. Next week, uh, I actually have a, an all-star lineup happening next week. I am really excited about it. You thought this week was pretty good with Bob Dunn and... Um, and others having the show next week uh, next Friday we're gonna have John Rowland back on the show you guys know he is uh, just one of the top tier commodity traders when I say commodities I'm talking energies oil we talked about oil last time he was on the show about a month ago we're gonna talk about natural gas this time which I'm really excited about and we've had a lot of questions um, we'll have Brandon Wendell on Tuesday I'm gonna have Walker England who's a new um, England he's a new guy for this show but he's been on power trading radio in the past He's a currency trader, big time rock star in the currency world. So we'll we'll bring up uh, Walker Anglin. And I may actually have a couple of guests. So at least uh, three days next week, we'll have guests on the show. If I don't have a guest on the show one day next week, it's going to be the tiramisu show. Someone keeps asking about the tiramisu recipe. I will. I, I did a presentation years ago where I compare trading to making tiramisu. So I might actually just give that presentation to you. Uh, I'll modify it, of course. But I, I think that there's... It's a great learning lesson, and you also get something out of it because you're gonna learn how to make tiramisu. And I will tell you this, my tiramisu is <laughs> GD. I know, I'm sorry, brother. You, I got a lot going on. I know GD wants the tiramisu. Uh, I had a friend in quarantine, my friend Nick came to visit me from Italy, and of course he is, um, a, his mother is the most amazing cook I've ever seen in my life. Seriously, I went to visit their house in Trento, Italy. Mamma mia, Trento, Italia. And in their kitchen, she has Cucina Italiana, which is, you know, think of like Better Home and Gardens, but for Italian cooking. And I'm not exaggerating. There are stacks from the very bottom of the floor all the way to the ceiling. There were two stacks of those going back to the 1960s. His mom was the most amazing cook I have ever encountered in my life. And honestly, I told her I would I would fund a restaurant. It would be the, one of the most amazing restaurants you've ever been to. She could take the worst tasting food on earth, liver, eggplant, something I just despise, and make me want to eat it over and over again. That's how good she was. Anyway, long story short, Nick came to my house. Uh, he got stuck here for quarantine. And I said, let's have a tiramisu cook-off. He's like, oh, 
I'll beat you. You're not gonna. You're not gonna. You're not gonna my tiramisu is the best. I had a blind taste test with some friends, and guess whose tiramisu won? Woo woo! This guy tiramisu. I won. So I will tell you my recipe. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> Uh, Caesar, did I do, did, I did it with, I remember that one. That was in Anaheim. I did a presentation with Darren Kamado and Stephen Hanno. That was a fun one. Did I talk about tiramisu? Uh, maybe I did. All right. Um, GD, just keep sticking on me. I will get to that one. And, and, uh, Chris says, any lagging indicator that you want? Um, okay. Let's see. What do I want to talk about? Does anybody have a lagging indicator that they want me to talk about? I mean, you can talk about, I mean, the three primary ones that you'll look at, um, I guess there's a lot. I guess the predominant ones, the major ones, are going to be stochastics, RSI, um, and, and Bollinger Bands. I think we could throw in that category as being the ones that you know are the most popular out there. What, what do you think? Um, any one of those three you want me to cover? Or I could go into other ones, but those are the ones I know off the top of my head. Those are going to be real simple. I'll do RSI. How about that? You guys like RSI? If not, uh, let me know in chat and I can do something else. But um, MACD, okay. That's the only comment I've seen from Dana has been MACD. So cheers, Dana, for the MACD comment about indicators, right? I didn't see anything else. Uh, da -da -da. <laughs> Although I will say this. And Natalia says, yes, please, tiramisu and trading, nothing could be better. I'm going to give you an apology to begin with with the tiramisu recipe. Because once you make this tiramisu recipe... You're going to want to make it over and over again. And I find myself eating the entire thing. It goes, to, and I don't even really like coffee. Oh, that's so good. I'm salivating right now over the tiramisu comments. Thanks. All right, I got, uh, I got an S, let's see. Moving average, SMA, MACD. I got two MACD divergence, Bollinger Bands. Oh my gosh, Fibonacci arcs. Uh, I'll tell you right now, Daniel, I'm not a fan of Fibonacci arcs. Um, they're, I think that they're an absolute joke because price is guaranteed to meet a Fibonacci arc. Let me, um, all right, I'm writing all those down. Uh, okay, then I'll leave the MACD for Warner. Let me, let me just look at Bollinger Bands just because it's one of my personal favorites. And I actually use Bollinger Bands. I know some of you might be like, oh, great, I want something else. Let me just show you that one and we'll walk through Bollinger Bands here just so I can show you. So, Basically, what we're all under the impression is that price moves in waves, and you can see trends and patterns form all the time. Um, it, it's critical that you understand the foundation, the basis of a lot of these indicators. No, I'm not gonna do Fibarks. Uh, big Ab, I may show Fibarks once in literally like a two minute thing and go, this is why you shouldn't use them. Anyway, um, let's bring up, I'm gonna add on here a moving average. And I just disabled it on this chart, but I wanna just add it to it so you can see moving average. And I'll change this to a 20 period moving average. Before I do this, what I encourage you guys to do is this. Every single one of you, if you want to get better at indicators, what you should do is say, okay, let me understand what it's trying to show me. Show me the math, which a lot of times will go right over our head. Show me the math. And then what I want to do is understand how it's calculated and what it's trying to show me. Then what I encourage you to do is put it on the chart. Put the indicator on your chart, and in this case, I'm going to show you a 20 period moving average. And then run through, just click through like five or six different charts, right? So let me, um, actually, I will do it as a test here. So I'm going to show you guys this screen, and I'm going to start with the moving average, okay? I know some of you guys are getting to get bored here, but it's all right. Right now, I can tell you with 100% certainty, guaranteed, there's nothing on earth that would change my mind that price is below its, 100 per, or its 20 period moving average. It's below almost every moving average simply because look how far price is sold off on this USD CAD. So if I change it to a 20 period moving average, what that means is this current dot right where the cursor is, is the result of the last 20 candles closing price, add them up, divide by 20. That's it. So I know that it's going to be lower than that. So what I like to do is I like to just remove this indicator and I'll go to something else. Okay, let's just, let's just disable it just to give you guys an idea of how this works. Let's go to the 10 year. Right now, I guarantee you with 100% probability that right now the 10 year is well below the 20 period moving average. You can tell just because of the price. Let's go to something that might be more challenging. Okay, this is well above and extending itself above the moving average. And I don't wanna to spend too much time because I wanna to get to Bollinger Bands. I can tell you right now that 
the S&P 500, as you see on that chart there I just showed you, and I'll show you again, is above its 20 period moving average and it's above its upper Bollinger Band. How do I know that? Because price has extended itself. If it's not above its upper, upper Bollinger Band, it pierced it today. So let me show you the 20 period moving average and explain why it's there. This is basically saying this is the average price over the last 20 days. So it's no challenge or, or mystery to me that this is gonna be above its 20 period moving average. Now when I add Bollinger Bands in here, all Bollinger Bands do is take two standard deviations above and below this line. If you don't know what the standard deviations are, let me know and I will explain that to you. But standard deviations are basically saying what amount of statistical data is within a one standard deviation, two standard deviations, or three standard deviations. I'm trying to bring it up here for you. Um, if you look at two standard deviations, you're looking at about 95% of all of the data in a study is within two standard deviations. So if we took a, pop, uh, a poll uh, of average height of, of um, you know, the human beings, right? Average height of human beings. If you go two stand one standard deviation, you're looking at about 68% of all of the results will be within one standard deviation, either above the normal, which in this case is the 20 period moving average, or below it. Two standard deviations brings you to 95%. If you go three standard deviations, it's about 99.7%. And what that tells you is the data should be within those numbers. If it's not, it's an outlier. It shouldn't be there. It's, out, it's way beyond normal. So let's go and add that into uh, this S&P 500. There's your 20 period moving average. I'll add on Bollinger Bands, which are normally gonna be at two standard deviations. You can see right now, price is above two standard deviations, meaning statistically it shouldn't be there. And we all know that because it's moving so ridiculously fast to the upside right now, it's just, it's out of its mind moving to the upside because of the announcement with jobs today. So what that tells us when we look at something like Bollinger Bands is there is an elasticity to price. I think you guys have all heard me say this one before, and I'm gonna make it a one hour show today, I did not intend it. But I, if you have a rubber band in front of you, if you do, grab it. Anybody got a rubber band? Grab it. And I want you to put that rubber band around your wrist right now. Just grab it on your desk, put it around your wrist, and just like a little bracelet, right? Just, just there you go, I got my bracelet. Yes, Natalia says, outlier is the rubber band overextended. Perfect. So in this case, uh, I'm gonna actually put the, the chart on the screen. We'll do both. So we'll go one, host with one. There we go. You guys can see that moving average line. I gotta do it this way. Ah, it's not backwards. Oh, there we go, I'm, I'm backwards. So you guys can see that line is pointing up, at the blue line on your screen is pointing up at about that slope, right? So if you take the rubber band and you pull the rubber band, let's move it one inch away from your wrist. If you move it one inch away from your wrist and you let it snap back, it's not gonna leave a mark, it's not gonna hurt, you're like, okay, no big deal. Actually, depends how tight the rubber band is. But if you pull that rubber band, let's say six inches or a foot away from your wrist, now you're like, oh, please don't let go, it's gonna leave a sting. Now what if you lift it like five feet off your wrist? It's stretched, it's stretched so hard that the underside of your wrist is hurting from the rubber band cutting into it. You know when that thing gets let go, it is gonna hurt like hell. Right now, that's what Bollinger Bands is trying to tell you. It's telling you that price is extending itself away from the moving average. It, first off, the moving average is sloping up at a pretty sharp angle. Second, we have price piercing its upper Bollinger Band. By itself, it doesn't mean squat. It just means it's overbought. It can be much more overbought. Now what I'd like to see, and this is why yesterday was a really good example of this, if we get a situation where it's outside its upper Bollinger Band, and let me, uh, we had a really good example of this yesterday, so let me see if I can find, make it look that way without, uh, one sec. Let me take that off the screen here. I wanna take off this last candle. The last candle ruined it all, but that's why you have rules. And this is why Bob Dunn's rules were great yesterday, right? If we look at this candle, apologize, I'm trying to adjust stuff on the fly here. Okay, there you go, it ripped up, it ripped up. This is when we talked about Bob Dunn's thing. That little red candle, what Bob Dunn was saying, he was waiting for it to slow down and potentially reverse. Why? Because it was coming into the supply level. You can see by this little black line, right? That's entering the supply level. I'll move the other black line. So you had price coming into supply, you had it outside the upper Bollinger Band, and then all of a sudden it formed a spinning top. This is one of those things where you're going, hell yeah, this looks like it could be a sweet short. It could be a great reversal. Unfortunately, 
Many people jump on that just because it was outside the upper Bollinger Band at supply. You need, it, it's best to wait for confirmation. In this case, if you waited for confirmation, you would not have made the trade because it never traded lower than yesterday's low. I'll move this line down here. There's yesterday's low, you know, 3085. It never broke down below it. So you never have to worry about it. You wouldn't have made the trade. So just because we have this thing in a ripping position, getting close to historic highs here, there is the propensity to believe it should go down. But it doesn't have to. In this case, you saw it didn't just kept on going. It could make higher highs. Right now, you have it piercing the upper Bollinger Band. By itself, it's not a trade because you're nowhere near supply right now. Look at the daily chart. Daily the ES. You don't have any supply here for a while. We could start to talk about it once we get to this gap here, which means this thing could have smooth sailing to 3,300. You know, another 120 point move here without almost any sort of resistance for the S&P. That's where it looks like. Uh, there was somebody asking about that trade that I'm in. Um, look, my that that the put options I am that I have on the SPY. You know, I'll probably eat a big loss in that one. You know, I really was under the conviction that we'd see more markets sell off, but the Fed backstopped it, and all of a sudden, coronavirus turns out to be no big deal. That's my undoing. So um, I'm going to hold on to that until the options expiration in July, because I have September, so I'll, I'll close that options trade out with two weeks left, because right now, all I have is time value anyway. There's no intrinsic value in my option trade. It's purely time at this point. Um, so I'll be waiting for that one and we'll close it out there. My guess is at this point it's going to be a pretty significant loss for me. Um, mm -mm -mm. All right, let me go one last little question here and then I'll wrap it up because I, I wanted to make sure I went to a, an hour show for Big Ab. <laughs> uh, Merlin, you've been showing currency pairs on TradeStation charts today, but if and when you do place orders, presumably with an FX broker, um, how do you adjust... And are you talking about EST is like entry, stop, loss, and target? That it is? Well, I mean, I'll, I come up with my numbers from the charts I'm looking at. Generally, when you go from broker to broker, those numbers aren't so far off. They're pretty close. So if I'm using my entry, stop, loss, and target, if that's what you're um, asking about there on EST, it's the same. I just go in there and place the orders at the prices that I want. Simple, plain, and easy. All right. Uh, I got to wrap up. I'm an hour in. Big Ebbs Pappy. I got an, I got an hour into the show. You got a full one today. Uh, thank you guys for joining this week. Thank you all for the contributions. It was a busy day today. Kevin and Chef, Darren, Big Ebbs, Celeste, uh, Brandon, Marco. Uh, you guys all were awesome today, and I really do appreciate the contributions. Thank you guys so much. Hopefully, uh, you learned something new today, whether it was through the technical analysis piece we did or the stuff that Sam was talking about with regards to earnings. Every day should be a learning lesson out there. Hopefully this weekend you guys will all go out and start something. Write it down today, something you want to achieve for the next 30 days and just stick with it, whether that's working out, uh, changing your diet plan, cutting soda out of your diet, or whatever the case may be. Do something to help make yourselves physically and, and personally better health-wise. And maybe the trading will get even better because of it because you got a new rule to follow. Till then, happy trading, everybody. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up. I do appreciate that. I hope to see you all on Monday. Take care, everybody.